Hi, I'm Reverend Barb Borley, and I'd like to welcome to you to the uh, celebration today with St. Leonard's uh, Church community. Many of you know me. Uh, there's a few that may not, but I'm here for the next uh, five weeks to give Reverend Chris a break, a much-deserved break. Uh, so I will be doing the services, and uh, if there are any concerns while Chris is gone, please feel free to contact me. Uh, if there's changes in the service as dictated by the bishop, I will be in touch with the diocesan office and we will make the moves uh, that way. So anything that comes up for the most part uh, will be dealt with through me and uh, hopefully we can give Chris uh, a nice vacation and uh, it, it'll be easier to get a hold of me as well. Uh, during the summer it has been the uh, practice at St. Leonard's not to uh, say the psalm between the first and second reading, so we will be continuing with that uh, Just so you aren't aren't wondering where it is and also uh, I think it was I don't know when that started But it's been a quite a quite a number of years I think it might be that on the summer Sundays people want to get out quicker. So if you're wondering where it is, it's just uh, not being used for the summer months. I I'm so glad you're all here and look forward to celebrating together. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for being here, the people that are here to help with our celebration today, and also welcome everyone who is watching via Zoom or uh, YouTube. And before we begin our celebration today, let's just take a moment to prepare our hearts and open them to the Spirit of God working here among us. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to stand, if that's convenient for you, and sing with us, we are all part of the family.
tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will go. So they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, may you become thousands of ten thousands, and may your offspring possess the gate of those who hate him. Then Rebecca and her young women rose, arose and rode the camels and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went away. Now Isaac had returned from Beer the High Roy and was dwelling in Negev. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field toward evening. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, there were camels coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from the camel and said to the servant, Who is that man walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all th the things he had done. Then Isaac brought her into the tent of Sarah, his mother, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 7, verses 15 to 25. For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want. But I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that, and that is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have a desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all that all you that are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. When I was a teenager, 16-year-old, uh, I went to Paris on a school trip, and uh, it was uh, a great trip, of course, you can imagine all these teens, we thought it was wonderful. And, we were in the subway in Paris, and a man came up to me, uh, and he was obviously angry, and he was shouting at me, and uh, you know, I, in French, I was not a French student, and I didn't know what he was saying, but he was angry, and then he actually spit at my feet. I was horrified, and finally, um, not finally, quite quickly, uh, one of my friends, who was a francophone, uh, came in and, and talked to this gentleman. And then he, uh, he calmed down and he sort of nodded to me and walked away. And then my friend said to me, uh, he said, oh, well, he thought you were an American. And he doesn't like Americans. So uh, I'm not making a statement about Americans. I'm just telling you what my, my experience was. And I don't know what his experience was, but there was so much anger and it was all directed at me. And it was really, really hard. Like, it was, even though it only lasted a short period of time, it, it was difficult for me. I, I was being judged based on what um, another person thought I was, or who I was, or what I was. Now, when we're listening to scripture, for me, uh, in the times that we are, everything, um, you know, has a different edge to it a uh, little bit. And, and with what has happened recently with um, the Black, Black Lives Matter and the corresponding and related uh, Indigenous rights move in Canada, I heard this reading a little different than I have before. We've had to, uh, we've really been forced, if you watch the news at all, to look at racism um, that not only exists in the US, but here in Canada and around the world against people of color. And really it seems to be any color other than white. And if we look at the, the first line of scripture today, Jesus, we get it right away, he's frustrated. He says, to what can I compare this generation? And he goes on to 
talk, call them children, you know, because they just don't get it. I suspect Jesus is still frustrated. He gives the example of John the baptizer who was judged uh, because uh, he didn't eat or drink, that he had a demon within him. He came neither eating or drinking. And then Jesus comes and he eats and drinks and they label him a glutton and a drunkard. And they complain about who he spends his time with. So both of them were bringing the kingdom of God, though they lived in very different ways. And they looked out, uh, or sorry, they, they lived in different ways and they looked different, but both were judged by how they lived and who they spent their time with. Jesus is saying in this, you know, the son of, the son of man is here. <laughs> Jesus is here. And the people were still missing it. They still didn't get who Je that Jesus was there and, that, and who he was. And I don't think that it's a far stretch to see that playing out in the world today. We are seeing and hearing like never before what it is like to be a person of color or an indigenous person living in the world today. Many are judged just by the color of the skin or their race and not by what they have done or what they haven't done. I, I know I shared with a congregation, so some of you will remember this, um, a few years ago, um, a reality check that I had. Uh, it's still difficult for me to um, share because it, it, it was, um, it hurt my heart. Uh, what it was was when we lived in, my family and I lived in Louisiana, um, we, there were certainly many more black people in Louisiana than, than we have in Alberta. Uh, and, um, the, you know, the kids brought home friends that were black, and that was fine by me. Not many, because not many went to the schools my kids went to, but, you know, that was fine. We had people over that were black, and, you know, I, I thought I was fine. And I, I came to a point of realization that that was all good, but if I was driving and I stopped at a red light and there was a group of black youth on the corner, I would lock my door. And I came to the realization uh, that I wouldn't do that with white, with a group of white kids. And so it, it, it was a, a moment of awareness. Why on earth would I feel threatened by black youth and I, and I didn't with white? And there was, there was nothing to base that on. These, didn't know these people, there was, you know, no reason to believe that they, they were going to do anything, but yet it was there. So I, I had to take a really good look at myself, and I realized that somewhere in my mind or in my heart that I was fearful. I was more afraid of these young people, of the black young people, than I was of white, and I had no basis, as I said, for that. But what was most troubling was that it just seemed to come naturally, I, so much so I was unaware of it. And that's probably the scariest thing about that, is that I didn't even realize for quite a long time. And sometimes it's even more subtle than that. I was, I was talking to someone this week, and they were talking about having um, trees removed, big trees removed from their backyard. And, and the comment was, it was three uh, young Mexican men. But they did a really good job. <laughs> Why is there a but there? I, I don't believe this person to be racist, but again, why the but? We're somehow, in a subtle way, when we say things, there is, in the back of our mind, there has to be a difference. A difference between them, because I think if it was white, young white men, she'd say, oh, there were three young men and they did a great job, but somehow they had to be qualified and there was a but. So something, I think, happens to us that makes us um, see things a little differently. It, it, it's ingrained. We've been, you know, culturalized to that. I, I would say, I, I, my guess, 
and you may all tell me I'm wrong, that many of us, if not all of us, have some biases or prejudices. And sometimes, like I was, am unaware. The challenge of these, these times, I think, is to really look within. Ibram X. Kendi argues that the heartbeat of racism is denial. The heartbeat of anti-racism is confession. Being an anti-racist, Kendi says, requires persistent self-awareness, constant self-criticism, and regular self-examination. And heaven knows during COVID, we have lots of time for self-examination, but it's hard work. But we have an example as Jesus. He reached out to the ones that didn't fit in, to the culture, uh, that they didn't fit in the culture at the time, whether it was the Samaritan, the leper, the tax collector, the prostitute, or the Gentile. Jesus always welcomed those who were considered less than by the ruling culture. And you would think those of us that follow Christ would get it, wouldn't you? Maybe the fact that the people in Scripture didn't recognize Jesus when he was physically present to them and to the world, it's not so surprising that we still seem to miss him all too often. But the very basis of our faith our belief in God, and remembering that God is Father, Son, and Spirit all together. Our belief in God is that God is present within all people. The Spirit of God is in every person. There's no exceptions. It doesn't matter the color of the skin, what country they're from, how productive they are in the world, um, what their views are. It doesn't matter what gender they are, what sexual orientation they have, what religion they practice or don't practice. It doesn't even matter if they're good or bad, if they're drug addicted or homeless. All people are created in the image of God and all are loved by our Creator. You and I are called to love God and we cannot love God if we don't love our fellow human being. The question we need to ask is, ask ourselves, where are the places in our lives that we, like the people of this gospel that Jesus is talking about, don't see what is right in front of us? It's a challenge, and we're di living in difficult times. But the Black Lives Matters movement and those related um, call us to look inwardly and see where we have failed to love each other as God loves us. We are seeing violence in the streets, and that's on both sides. Luckily, we're also seeing compassion on both sides, too. And then we have COVID, which has placed limitations on our on us and has stopped us from physically sharing our love with our family and friends. The economy is suffering and many are out of work and probably there has never been more widespread uncertainty, or at least not in a good many years. It is indeed a challenging time. But this scripture, this scripture that challenges us today also gives us great hope. Come to me, Jesus said. Take my yoke upon you and learn for you, from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you notice all the first person pronouns? Come to me, Jesus says. Take my yoke and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's really important because it means we're not doing this alone. God, Jesus, the Spirit is with us as we journey. And like Paul, when we do things we don't want to, we have a source to come back to, a source that wants to help us 
to love fully all of God's creation. We're not alone. And in this time where most of us have extra time, maybe we can spend that time with Jesus. Learn from him. Find comfort in him. And know that, indeed, that is very good news. Thanks be to God. In the morning prayer, we have the option uh, to say the Apostles' Creed, which is what we have been doing. But there's also the option to say the Hear, O Israel, which I've chosen for today, which I think from the Gospel, or from my reflection on the Gospel, um, will be obvious why I chose it. Let us confess our faith as we say, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Amen. Our offering him is softly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Mm -hmm.
Teach us to be generous in sharing the blessings you've given us with others. We pray for the creation care ministry of this church. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for all the essential service workers, those in health care, those involved in every stage of food production and delivery, and those who we sometimes do not see. You see us all. We ask for your blessing on all selfless giving. We give thanks for your healing work in the lives of members of the parish who are going through difficult times. In the hospital, we remember Marion, Don, and Norma. In our parish, we remember Don, Mary, Kathy, Jim, Grace, Peter, Karen, Colin, Murray, Elaine, Don, and Susan, Margaret O, Jean W, and Lloyd e. We give thanks for God's healing work in the lives of others who have asked us to pray for them. Lena, Addison, Velma, Joey, Andrew, Pat, Des, Nyan, Don, Kari, Anna, Denise, Sandra, McKenna, Carrie, Carol, Gerald, and John. And now we lift up those who are on our hearts today. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, there is much suffering in our world because of injustice, oppression, and violence. We pray that you remove the roots of fear, anger, and greed that feeds this evil. We pray for the nations and for peoples everywhere affected by war, natural disasters, political upheaval, and religious terrorism. May they be comforted and aided in healing and rebuilding. May they find peace. We remember our own community of Red Deer. We especially pray for the sick, the unemployed, the homeless and the broken, that they may find your comfort and healing. We remember other vulnerable people, specifically the poor, the lonely, seniors, children, and families with young children. We ask that you give the most vulnerable what they need. We pray for carols and other churches, and specifically today we remember Missioner Hill Church of God. We ask your blessing on all teachers and students at the Red Deer Public Schools and the Red Deer Catholic and Southern Schools. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying, and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We particularly remember Connie Price's family, and they experience your comforting presence as they mourn her passing. O God and Father of all, whom all the heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you. Let all the nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and all people everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, you have taught us through your Son that love reveals the law. May we love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And may we love our neighbor as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue to pray today. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. 
thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us on into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the line is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will sing, What Can I Do? hunger and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them 
and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world so that we can, with God's grace, do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you all for being here.